summoned me, Grand Calculator Savlon? Yes, I did. Where have you been, Lieutenant Pigeon? Lieutenant. What did you say? Hope you weren't trying to flaunt your feathery authority at me. You're in charge of my Force Network weekly report, Army. Nothing more. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Grace. Please pluck whichever feather you feel suitably fits my transgression. Oh, don't be such a chicken. I won't harm you. Your brute strength and humorously wee intellect amuse me. Do you have a mission for me, my lady? Oh, you are so eager. I like that. Your mission... Which, if you refuse, I will explode you in five seconds, is something of an impossible task. I do like my underlings to like a challenge. Underling? Was that something? I should think not. What do you know about swap worlds? Uh, to the best of my limited knowledge, swap worlds are a nonsense. Theoretical alternate galaxies, where, for example, I am in charge of you. Pure folly, of course. Well, of course they are. Unless they are not. My exact science core, before I had them crushed into a cement mixer for wearing the wrong sort of lab coat. Theorized such worlds could be breached via a signal, which I want you to locate. And then what? Report back your findings. The signal's origin is in the barrage Gand cluster five clicks space west of that inert death hole that showed up recently. Now, inert. Isn't that dangerous? Are you questioning me again? Know your place. I know of your humble beginnings. A plaything of Professor Brock Mender. Nothing more. Now go, before I unleash my big infinite power upon you. The code signal appears to be from an advanced computer called Lairpack. A prototype interface that once, in my hands, will... Actually, that's none of your business. Be gone! Damn that, Savron. Do this, do that. Do something intimate to me, but let's keep it to ourselves. The sooner I'm free, the better. Hey, man, cool your circuits. We should make our necks go boom, boom. Scatbot, get out! You're only meant to be here as a mascot to missions on jazz planets. I thought I'd just tag along, crazy bird. Well, don't think I won't use you as an ashtray or a humanoid shield if this mission gets nasty, which it will. You sure you want to stay? Let's get blasted into that mission. I am programmed to love only jazz music. And only that, all the time. So death would be a blessing. This is it. We're in that part of the storm that's the reverse of the eye. If your death was really on your to-do list, this is where you get done terminally. I'm not changing mind. I am that sick of loving just jazz. Some kind of protective beam. We're being rescued. Oh, I hope it's not Savlon. She never gives me a chance. Right, let's stand by to be groveling. This is no life. Hey, we're being guided into a large space finger entrance. It's landing us. Crazy, man. Okay, we are all very impressed by the size of your big bad ship. Am I addressing the Lurpak computer? Do you compute? Hand yourself over and we can all go home. And where exactly is home for you? It's you. Another you. Is this Jazz Android your only friend? I have many much fitter and sexier underlings under my feather thumbs. Who are you? I am you. A better you. A you from another universe. Dear, oh dear, are you really me? I knew I'd done well in my reality, but look at you. You look terrible. Looks aren't everything. I have this. What's that supposed to be? 
Any force you try and zap me with, your so-called accuracy will simply tickle me. I am made of a different universe. It'll theoretically bounce back and kill you. Shall we test that theory out? Or you can hand over the Lurpak computer right now. I, in all truth, have no idea what that is, but your funky excuse for an android seems to. I am picking up some mean vibes. The whole freighter has the Lurpak at its mental hub. It's gonna kill us all, man. Bad jazz. Oh, cool. At least I'll be dead. It's probably the two of us being in close proximity. Some kind of potential paradox. Perhaps a force I can harness. Good plan. This so-called ship is rejecting us. I borrowed it after I fell through a death hole. Do you have the gods of witchcraft in charge here? No, just Grand Calculator Savlon and her doubtacons. Ha! Huh. I got Pseudocrim and the Skeptonauts. Right. We are all dead. And I am happy. I thought meeting another me would help. But you scruffy so-called Lieutenant Pigeon. Lieutenant! Useless! Wait. You are made of a different universe, and that's what's freaking this Lurpak computer brain. That's the solution. Our being together. It doesn't know what will happen. What, you mean, just get as close as we can and it will see that nothing bad will happen? Give us a kiss. Can't think of a more deserving case. Okay, you can stop now, so-called bird of paradise. Oh, the jazz robot. It's actually dying. That's a shame. You are much more sappier than me. It's only a jazz bot. At last, my love, which I hate, is over. No more jazz. But I can sense an undoing in the metallic ether. Your kiss has moved galaxies. It wasn't that good. Speak for your so-called self. The temple bridge has been broken. Cran is free. The mind wars will follow. And Tempest Fungoid will inhabit a dead man. Is there anyone here you'd like to kill? Your boss, perhaps? Doctor Witch featured Richard Eve as Lieutenant Pigeon and Lieutenant Pigeon. Danny Eve as Grand Calculator Savlon and Elliot Stewart as another jazz robot, and is written by Elliot Stewart and is an Invisible Commission's production.